Welcome to the Piano Shop in Bath. In this presentation, we're going to show you how we have recently fully restored a 100-year-old tired Bluthner piano into one which looks and plays like new. We're going to see the process and watch its progress from when it entered our workshop to its completion in our main shop. Let's start by seeing concert pianist Nuri Lee checking out its performance. The story started here in mid-2020. This is Phil. Phil is our French Polish specialist here at the piano shop in Bath. Phil has spent his entire career embracing the art of French polishing pianos and other fine antique furniture. He has over 40 years of experience following many years of training with experts. Today he has become established as one of the UK's very few real French polishers working in high-end piano restoration. One of the piano shop specialities is the full restoration of exquisite instruments from the late 19th and early 20th century. This was an era when the building of pianos reached a pinnacle and the finest woods were selected for their manufacture as their style and appearance was a prerequisite in the instrument market. In this video, we're going to follow the restorative progress of a particular instrument following its hundred years of excellent service to its previous owners. We'll watch how Phil and the piano technicians bring it back to its former glory. When considering whether to renovate an old piano, it's important right at the outset that the basic instrument is considered to be a fundamentally sound one. Our piano technicians will make this assessment with respect to the basic instrument. Regarding the casework, Phil will carefully examine the wooden panels to ensure that it can be effectively restored and that there is no damage from insects or damp that will defeat its full recovery. The task of returning the piano to its former glory follows two paths. Firstly, there are the technical aspects of the instrument which are tackled by the piano technicians. This involves stripping the instrument and replacing pin blocks, strings, refelting hammers and the key bed and making the piano's interior look like new. It's then necessary to tune and retune the piano to concert pitch, then regulate the action so that the piano feels like a new one to play. It's always worth noting that over the past hundred years or so, the manufacturing quality of strings, action components and felt technology has improved, to the point that the piano may well end up as a finer instrument than when it was originally manufactured in the factory all those years ago. And then secondly, there is the all-important attention given to the piano's rosewood casework. Regarding this particular Bluthner piano, it was decided that its rosewood case was sufficiently good enough to warrant the care and attention of Phil's French polishing expertise. This type of work cannot normally be executed with a piano in situ. It needs to be dismantled. It's important to separate the many case panels, key blocks, lids, front key strip and other components so that they can be individually restored and matched for colour and texture. In order to achieve the desired reflective glass-like finish of a traditional French polished piano, the wood needs to be carefully stripped bare. The first stage is to remove all traces of existing wax and polish and strip the surface down to a pristine base with the application of a liquid wood stripper. Once the liquid stripper has been applied, its acid will dissolve the polish and wax. After the surface has bubbled up, it then needs to be carefully scraped off. This process is repeated many times until all traces of residue are removed. It will then be washed over with a blended neutralising liquid. 
After this process is completed, the wood is rubbed down and honed with an extremely fine sandpaper until the finish is smooth and velvety to the touch. Quite a lot of dust can be generated, so it's important for Phil to protect his breathing by ventilating the room and using a face mask. A lot of repeated cleaning down is required. This is because the next stage is the application of liquid shellac primer. This application demands a completely dust-free surface. What we see here is the casework having been stripped, then rubbed down with a very fine grade sandpaper in readiness for the application of the first coats of shellac. Everything I do is by hand, you know, and it's building it up, up, up to get to that the finish that you require. And it's all done by hand. There's no buffing wheels involved or no buffing compounds. It's all to do with this. Some people call that a fad, others call it a rubber. To get that polish on there, coat after coat after coat, and keeping the flat finish and gradually building it up until all the grain is full and all you've got is a glass top. Once you've achieved that, you then bring the gloss out of it. And that is the skill and the rubber and the experience and the eye of when you're polishing the last couple of coats and you've got what you call the ghost rubber and it, as you polish it along you get like a shadow follows your rubber it follows it along the, the surface like that and you keep your eye on that until you get to a certain point and you know that's the time to stop and what that does it brings all the oil because when you French polish properly you use linseed oil to lubricate the rubber and stop it sticking so you use the oil to lubricate the rubber to get the, the required um, amount of polish on there and then the last few coats you use a uh, spirit reduced down till that's almost dry but not quite dry and you're rubbing it along like that and you watch your ghost rubber what they call and that brings all the oil that you've used from start to finish right up to the surface and then to get that glass finish you use acid a uh, 10 to 1 mix and Vienna chalk and you ru rush it up you wipe it on with a cloth like that and then you put the French chalk on your hand and you literally rub the oil off the remainder of the oil off and as you're doing that you're putting the gloss on the finish Following the repeated application of shellac, which is carried out with great expertise, the panels are left to dry at room temperature for many hours. Sometimes the panels may be left for a few days in order for the surface to normalise in readiness for final coats. Potentially, a great deal of applications of shellac will be required. In fact, There'll be as many required as necessary to achieve the desired finish. Great care is taken to ensure that the wooden components match in terms of colour, sheen and texture. Finally, the wooden panels and blocks can be reassembled. Following this, they have their metal components attached, such as hinges, music desk, pedals, locks, etc. Once the piano's main case is assembled, the strings and other internals can be revealed after many weeks of being protected from dust. At last, the piano's case can be finally assembled. It is then left for at least seven days to harden in situ, because in these early days the panels could be somewhat spoilt during handling and moving. Once the external surfaces have been suitably hardened, the piano technicians can tune and regulate the instrument to its shown condition. Here we see the final piano as a shop floor display. Now let's watch Nuri Lee play some of Rimsky-Korsakov's The Bumblebee. 
to demonstrate the playability of this hundred-year-old instrument. Nuri plays many pianos in her career, but she was amazed that such an old piano could play like new. <laughs> 